but also mentally. I think just watching podcasts, hanging around the right people like you, yeah. Tristan and Kevin, and just yeah. putting that into your mindset is gonna help you grow that way too. So the gym, I also like hanging out with family, going out to dinners. I love trying new uh, restaurants. Yeah. That's a big thing I like doing. And yeah, just really focusing on working on myself as I'm learning on a daily basis, um, but building on my company at the same time. Let's go. Let's go. Welcome back, everybody. Another episode of Adversity Kings. We have special guest today. It's Caden, right? Yes, Caden. And what's last name? Vitterini. Vitterini. Yep. Let's go, brother. And then um, I don't know exactly how we got in touch. Some Somebody in my business does something with you, right? Yes, Kevin. Kevin. Yes. Okay, let's yeah, go. Yeah, so he's actually part of my 1% team. Let's go, brother. Yeah. Let's go. So where were you born and raised? Born and raised in Bolingbrook, Illinois. Yeah? Yeah, and still living there. Let's go. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. So where about your parents? Where are they from? Uh, so one's actually, my dad's from Lombard, and my mom is from, like, Naperville area. Yeah? Yeah. Now, are you first, second, third generation American? Like, where, where are the parents' nationality? Where, where are you from? from? Uh, Italian, um, first, uh, third generation. So grandparents were in Italy? Yes. Cool. Yep. Let's go. Do you go back often? Uh, no. No? I've actually never been there, but yeah. planning on going there within the next uh, year or two. Let's go. Dope, yeah. dude. What was, um, what was growing up for you like? Growing up for me was actually really good. I have a supportive family, uh, friends. They were really um, supportive about what I do in life. I was raised, I did Taekwondo for a long time, so I'm yeah. a third degree black belt. That kind of taught me a lot through maybe discipline and how yeah. to become the best version of myself. I trained very hard. I had an old school Korean master that pushed me to my limits and that's why I am who I am today. And along that way, the parents and friends and family really um, cared for me and brought me up the right way. Who were you closest to growing up, mom or dad? Probably mom. I would yeah. say she's probably one of my biggest mentors in my life. She's been very successful through what she does and she's taught me a lot that I know. What they do for work? What so do they do now? My mom is actually working at R365, so they sell software for restaurants. She also is a coach. She does live coaching for the younger generation, kind of how I started too. And then she does some uh, mentoring and um, consultation stuff for older professionals. So she does like a ton of different things. My dad has owned his own salon for the past 25 years. Let's go. Yeah. Dope, dude. Dope. And then did you play any sports growing up? Yeah, so I did the Taekwondo. Um, I did. I was on a hip hop competitive dance team. So we competed at national uh, competitions. I was also on America's Got Talent. Did that. True. And then I played, uh, cro traveled across for about seven, eight years too. Yeah? Yeah. What would you do on America's Got Talent? So I danced. So our crew is yeah. like a bunch of guys. So we had a team of like 50, but that uh, specific group was our age range. So I was 17 at the time. It was right before COVID hit. Yeah. And there was about nine of us on there. We're on YouTube. You go and check us out at uh, Extreme Dance Force. Yeah? Yeah. Let's go, dude. Um, what was the hardest adversity you had to go through growing up? Well, how old are you? 20 years old. And 20 I years uh, old. turned 21 in February. Let's go, big dog. So yeah. up until this point, what's the hardest adversity you've had to go through? <sighs> you know, I, I'm really thankful that I really haven't had to go through much. Yeah. Um, I know there's going to be some tough times probably coming up in my life with people, family getting sick, maybe friends passing away or whatever, but I have been very fortunate and I know a lot of people have things that they go through, but I'm very fortunate, I'm thankful, and I really haven't had too much that has brought me to where I'm at today. Yeah? Yeah. Nothing internally kind of just like put you in a mental spot where you felt it like rock bottom, like you weren't going anywhere in life, and like, I would, maybe maybe you could label it as like a depression, but like a darkness. You never, you don't feel like you've gone through a season in life where you were at a darkness? Not really. I would say the biggest thing is there were some moments in my life where I wasn't either doing well in school yeah. or my friend choices hanging around the wrong crowd, and I knew I had something in me. I knew I had a gift. And I Did really you go had through a, like a high school breakup? Uh, yes, yeah, some of those, yeah, yeah. But nothing that brought me down to rock bottom. But okay. yes, things that set me up, maybe going to the gym, launching my own company, Vit yeah. Factor. So things that did set me up for the success that I'm bringing to yeah. the world and impacting as many lives as possible. But nothing that set me to rock bottom. Now, when did you start this Vit Factor? So I started uh, about 18, 19 months ago. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. It's almost two years old. And um, what all does that entail? What does that consist of? Yeah, so there's four main components of my business. The first thing is I'm a certified professional life coach. So I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring and coaching with kids ages eight to 18, and I teach them life skills. So 
how to communicate, motivation, confidence, uh, healthy mind and body, and how yeah. to become the best version of themselves. I also, the second component is I do school assemblies. So I talk at elementary, middle schools, high schools, motivational speaker, but also teaching them a lot of things like working yourself is cool, right? How to really focus on maybe the right crowd and all yeah. that stuff. I have a 1% team of 50 young, like-minded professionals, entrepreneurs, where I brought on Kevin and we do, uh, I host bi-weekly Zoom calls where I bring on CEOs, best-selling authors, VPs to come teach us their mindset and content, right? I yeah. also host team dinners. We do volunteering to give back, and we go to uh, other events and workshops. And then the last thing is I host events. So I have my third annual Ripple Effect event coming January 4th, and it's up to 200 people. So yeah. it's building up quickly. It's at the Boingbrook Golf Course, and it really is made for everybody. So families, young professionals, businesses are coming with tables, and it's a really high energy motivational event about personal professional growth, um, making valuable connections, kickstarting 2024 in the right direction, brought on a lot of great speakers. And then I have about 30 awesome sponsors that want to be a part of what I'm doing. Yes. Yeah. Let's go, dude. That's fire. Thank you. Now, when you're giving this life coaching, do you ever feel like weird? You know what I mean? Like being 20 years old, like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel like even myself being 25, I think there's a there's a void of like you know what kind of life coaching can we give right when life hasn't even necessarily truly started yet yeah you know what I'm talking about yeah I 100 percent agree and I would say I'm constantly learning along the way I yeah. meet with about 30 to 40 kids on a weekly basis one on one and really young and relatable so they look at me as that coach friend and positive influence in their life that yeah. they can connect with as they know I'm always there right so there's maybe times that I wasn't super motivated or I didn't work on myself healthy mind and body or reaching goals so able yeah. to teach them these skills and ways to become the best version of themselves yeah yeah that's fire so wh how well did your business do the first year and how well is it doing this year now yeah it's building up every week i'm gaining more clients adding more to the team uh the events are expanding i look them take them on the road within yeah. the next couple years i got some big plans in 2024 that are going to be coming up such yeah. as maybe writing a book uh doing a ted talk so got some Good stuff in the works, but yeah, it's motto is 1% better every day. Yeah. And if you focus on doing that every single day, it will add up. There's yeah. gonna be off days. There's gonna be days where maybe no money's coming in or you haven't yeah. met anybody or new clients or whatever. But I think if you focus on that mindset, over time, the success will build up. No, a thousand percent agree. Yeah. But now if you were to measure analytically the, the growth of the business for someone that wanted to invest into the business, what did it do year one? What's it gonna do year two? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. did it do, you know, a couple million year one, and then year two, it'll do double that. Like where, where are we at in regard to uh, gross revenue? Yeah, so not revenue. to those numbers yet, but definitely planning on getting there. So yeah. I charge for the one-on-one -on -one sessions. I do the school assemblies, community events, and then through the events, sponsorships, uh, the ticket price. So I am making good money through that. Yeah. And I do see 2024 doubling or tripling. Okay. Yeah. Let's go, big dog. Um, so... In addition to all that, what do you like to do to just be like a like a human being? You know what I mean. So outside of all the development and all that, because yeah. like, you know that's that's been my life as well. But like, what do you do to be like a human? Like, what are your hobbies? Like, wh where can people what can people find you doing that's just like normal? Yeah. You know? So I'm big into the gym. I think that's super important. Working yeah. on yourself mentally and physically, the physical part of things. Pushing myself every day in the gym, even if on my off day, just going and doing cardio, the sauna, right, and yeah. then really focusing on how you eat because that's a big part of the physical aspect, but also mentally, I think just watching podcasts, hanging around the right people like you, yeah. Tristan and Kevin, and just yeah. putting that into your mindset is gonna help you grow that way too. So the gym, I also like hanging out with family, going out to dinners. I love trying new uh, restaurants. Yeah. That's a big thing I like doing. And yeah, just really focusing on working on myself as I'm learning on a daily basis, um, but building up my company at the same time. Let's go. Yeah. So do you like like any like movies or like? Yeah. No, I love uh, like, movies. I <laughs> like some like normal like little hobbies or things like that. Yeah, I'm not a big uh, TV show guy, but I okay. do like movies. I like the old school Italian movies. I think so. Like Bronx Tale is a good one. Yeah, I was just um, talking about that movie the other day. Yep. So Bronx Tale, even like Casino is a good one. So yeah, I'm a big movie guy. Uh, not so much TV shows. Okay. Yeah. What about? Let's see here. You said food. What are some of your favorite restaurants? I would say some of my favorite restaurants is uh, Sullivan's, downtown Naperville. So the steakhouse there is probably one of my favorites. We go there a couple times a year. Uh, Kiku, which is a Japanese steakhouse too. So the sushi there is probably the best in Illinois. Um, and then 
probably like on the lower end, probably like Chick Fil A. I think Chick Fil A's yeah. just Consistent. they're spot on, and then how they like put their business out there with just. They're so nice, right? When they're yeah. uh, bringing you your food or whatever, and they're also a big sponsorship of Vit Factor uh, financially, just bringing uh, people for my event, gift cards, and all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's fire, bro. Um, what about? Do you watch any type of sports or like? Are you big in the UFC or anything like that? Yeah, so I definitely, um, I'd say the biggest sport that I watch and follow is college football. Yeah, uh, I am in college right now. I go to Western Michigan, but I do follow college uh, football a lot too. Okay. Yep. Now, what are you going to college for? Uh, sales and business marketing, and then uh, double majoring in leadership and strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, would you ever just drop out and fully focus on business? Have thought about that. Um, I do make a lot of time for my business. Um, I did start it when I was already two years into college, so I was yeah. like, you know what? Might as well finish it. And has been something that I've thought about many, many times, but I do plan on just finishing it and then going all in with Bit Factor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like that. And and what about have you studied any of the college per se, just the financial stats when it comes to the debt to income ratio when it comes to college, the shelf life of the degrees, different things like that to take into perspective with uh, your dreams and thoughts and also given the coaching you give? I have looked into that. And yeah, I if I started Vid Factor a couple years before college, I probably will not be at college, but like I said, I am two years in, but I do follow that. Um, yeah. My parents are on the same page as me. I knew, or I know going into college and now finishing, I will have some student debt, but I plan on taking my company to the next level where yeah. I won't really have to deal with that too much. Yeah, yeah, that's fire. What are you a spender on? What are you like, what's the, what's the point of you wanting to be an entrepreneur? Like, why do you want to get rich? Yeah, so definitely impacting as many lives as possible. And yeah just changing lives on a weekly and monthly basis through my events, one-on-one -on -one school assemblies. But on the other side of things, what I like spending my money on is I'm big into shoes and clothes. Yeah. I did uh, reselling for about two to three years before my company where I originally met Kevin. So I did the reselling of shoes. I would have tables at events. So I'm very uh, passionate about how you present yourself. I yeah. think that's super important. So yeah, all that good stuff, watches, jewelry, uh, shoes, clothes yeah. is maybe what I'll spend some of that on too. What's the what's the dream accessory or pair of shoes or what do you what do you really like? What's gonna be like the first like landmark of like man we're really starting to get some traction in regard to success? Um, I think right now I definitely continue uh, buying what I'm buying, but the bigger accessory definitely a very nice car. Yeah. I think one of my dream cars coming up is a Trackhawk. Yeah. Jeep Trackhawk, Jeep Grand Cherokee um, is definitely what I'm wanting and after. Yeah? Yeah. You're going to have to keep that sucker garage. It's the number one most stolen vehicle in Chicago. I'm, I'm sure it is, yeah. yeah. And I will uh, keep that safe for sure. Yeah, that's dope. Man, so what about the next five years? What's the plans? Like, where, where's your vision kind of leading you outside of, like, impacting lives, growing your business? Like, where do you see yourself? What are some specific details that, that you've got mapped out for the next five years? Yeah, I definitely want to invest more, investing into uh, companies, um, other people specifically, but also to take my stuff on the road. I think this is a nationwide thing where I'm impacting as many lives as possible through the events, uh, doing a school assembly tour, uh, doing a TED talk, uh, writing my own book, doing things like that is what I see building up in the next couple of years. Like I mentioned in the beginning, 1% better every day. So every day I'm learning something new that's gonna benefit me in my future. And what separates you? Cause you're, you're, you're in a very it's kind of like this podcast, you know yeah. what I mean? Like we made a podcast when everyone made a podcast. Right. So it's like, it's a very diluted market. What do you think is going to separate you in a very diluted market where everybody is a life coach? You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like everybody and their mother is, is going on tours and selling courses for life coach development one-on-one and, and, you know, very charismatic, this, that, the third. They have all of these different things that they might be able to market and, and distribute in regard to services and products. Yeah. What, why would people want to choose you? Right, because I think definitely with that younger generation, like I mentioned before, is I'm relatable. So those kids really connect with me, not as that parent or therapist aspect. They look at me as that coach, friend, and positive influence. So I think even when I was uh, becoming a certified professional life coach, I had to go through a lot of uh, hard training in person through Zoom. What I realized is I was the youngest by like 10 to 15 years. But in seeing that is why I believe I'm a standout through that younger generation and building up, like for an example, um, like Andrew Tate, Andrew and Tristan Tate, right? They're doing great things and really wanting to build that younger generation up to men, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, man, and, and I, I completely agree, and I feel like you, jumping into, you know, a, a industry, per se, or a niche like that where you're dealing with, with big wigs such as Andrew and Tristan Tate is uh, definitely a, you know, admirable thing, mm -hmm. but also at the same time, that's a big challenge. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because right. a lot of people don't want to tune into nothing unless it's a real big name. Exactly. You know, so that's, that's unique. So what about where do you see yourself living? You know, are you going to stay around, stick around here, get college done? For the next around? couple of years, yes, living here, but I definitely plan on moving out. Uh, my Florida is probably is my hot spot. Yeah. I've been there many times. I've been all over Florida, tens and tens of hundreds of times, it feels like, but definitely probably down in Florida somewhere. Down in Florida. Are you, yep. are you a rent or own type of guy? Are we talking with, like, cars or? I don't know. Just in general? I think own. Own? I think own, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So... Do you take it so with with the owning aspect of things? Have you kind of looked at the difference of? I know Grant Cardone always says rent where you live, but own your investments. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I, like, have you took into consideration of maybe changing your mindset? And I'm just curious. You know what I mean? Because I like the yeah. idea of owning things. Right. Yep. As well. You know what I mean? But you know, I I rent most of the stuff right now. The office spaces. I mean, I own the truck, but everything else I pretty much try to rent and leverage credit, leverage mm -hmm. capital from other individuals or, or organizations to keep as much liquid cash as possible and divide that into the areas that I, I see best fit opposed to maybe depreciating assets or depreciating liabilities, anything, anything that really isn't giving me a massive ROI. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Maybe switching it up on you know, the own versus rent mindset. Yeah, I think definitely the market in world is changing every day. So I think uh, certain things to rent into, but yeah. also certain things to own. Like you kind of mentioned your car, but you're also renting like this office space. So yeah. definitely as I continue to grow up and build what I'm doing uh, through VitFactor, starting to rent and own certain things and see what's going to bring me in the most ROI. And Yes. Yeah. What's your favorite book you've read? Ooh. This one is a different type of one. It's called Relevant, Different, Better. And this is by Ron Wagner, who is also one of my big mentors. He'll actually be speaking at my event. But I really like that read as each chapter is about 150 chapters, but each chapter is about two to three pages. So it's really easy to retain um, what's coming in through that, Yeah, if that makes sense. And what, what was the biggest thing you got from that book? Just, ooh, that's tough. Like I mentioned, it was 150 different chapters, but I would say the biggest thing is probably um, just how to be different, right? I think that's the biggest thing is what brings people success is why you? Why are you different than everybody else around you? Like you mentioned earlier, like why are you different than all the other life coaches, Yeah, right? Is being in that different level and building up different things because that's what I want is I started off with the one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I was like, this is not enough. I want to do more. So I expanded into the 1% team, the events that I'm hosting, the school assemblies, because I really knew that I had the gift and I wanted to spread that through what I do. Let's go. Now, what about podcasts? You said you mentioned podcasts. What's your favorite podcast? Definitely Alex Ramosi. Yeah. I think uh, listening to him and how just like fluent he is with his wording and how much like you could really take away with what he's talking about. Uh, definitely Alex Hermosi, but also on the other side of things, like I mentioned, um, Andrew and Tristan Tate are talking about completely different things. I feel like they're very world focused and what's going on with in the world, but also with you as an individual. And Alex Hermosi is focusing on a lot about like personal and professional growth. So I would say those are probably my top two. Fire. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to cover. Is there anything else you wanted to cover? I think you asked a lot of great questions, got to know me on a, yeah. like I mentioned, personal and professional level. Um, but yeah, I think you did cover a lot and yeah. Let's go. Fire. All right. Well, a quick little episode of Adversity Kings. This was Caden. Where can people find you on social media? Uh, Vit.factor on any social media. So Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn even. And then also my website is www.vitfactor.com. Let's go. Shout out Vitfactor and shout out Caden. Merry Christmas. If we get this up before Christmas. Probably will not get this up before Christmas, but happy belated Christmas if you see this after Christmas. Let's yes. go. Have a great day. Peace. Thank you, Tristan. Thank you, boys.